Hello, welcome to another video tutorial. This is part of session seven, programming from A to Z, and I'm, uh, all these videos are about grammars, specifically context-free grammars. So today I want to talk about a particular uh, grammar generation library for JavaScript called Tracery. Wah! Tracery. Tracery is by Kate Compton, at Galaxy Kate on GitHub. It's a wonderful project. It allows you to be really creative with generating text, generating stories, making a Twitter bot, um, just by putting together a bunch of possibilities in a way, uh, a grammar, so to speak. So um, first I'm going to show you an example. Um, this is actually, um, this is called Once Upon a Time Stories. It is by a five-year-old and an eight-year-old who happen to be related to me. They're my children. And they didn't write the code for this, but they wrote the grammar. So I'm going to uh, just generate a story and read it to you. Once upon a time, there was a princess. And that princess was very happy. And the princess liked hamburgers. The princess was very jealous. Then the princess met a lovely, sad chupacabra. And she killed the chupacabra. Yahoo! And then the princess ate the burrito. And she was so sunglasses. And she was heart eyes to today. I don't know, let's generate another one. <laughs> oh, there's a princess again. There, ah, dragon, okay. Once upon a time there was a dragon and that dragon was very angry and the dragon liked shrimp? So you can see, this is one way of using a grammar like tracery to generate, and there's a little bit of like color and emojis and stuff going on here, but to generate text. So let me just look into the code for this for a second so that I can point out to you what the grammar actually, oops, I'm in the wrong place, what the grammar actually looks like. So this is what the grammar actually looks like. And the grammar is simply a JavaScript object. And remember, if you watched my first video about context-free grammar, everything is about production rules. Take this and replace it with this. And if you have this, replace it with this. And if you have this, replace it with this. And you gotta start with something. So if I come back to here, you're gonna see here there is a start. Now there's some strange syntax, there's a hash symbol and a bracket, colon and a character, there's a story, there's characters, but you can see there's a selection of food options, a selection of monster options, that sort of thing. And I should point out to you one thing you'll notice, by the way, is you can, in JavaScript, if you want to have emojis, you could just stick emojis in, a, they are read just as text like anything else. I mean, they're, how they're interpreted and displayed depends on what the environment you're living in. But the, the Unicode, char the characters themselves uh, um, um, are there for you to use. Okay, so okay, so let's make our own let's let's make our own tracery grammar, and uh, and then we'll come back to this one. Okay, so what am I doing here? I want to go to my example, which is over here. This is some blank code. I'm going to go here, make sure it's running. Great. So the first thing I need to do is get that tracery library, and tracery as a library is just this JavaScript file tracery.js. So I'm going to um, grab this file, and I'm going to do something silly, which is just copy. I could download it, but I'm just going to copy paste it into a new file, uh, which I'm going to call a tracery. I guess I could have done this not in the video. Tracery.js. I'm going to copy it there. And then I need to make sure if I'm using another uh, JavaScript library that I want to make sure that I um, also reference it in the index.html file. So just like I'm using p5.dom, I want to use tracery. Now, Another thing, actually, by the way, is tracery uh, is dependent on jQuery. So it uses jQuery behind the scenes. So I also should make sure I download and grab jQuery. So I also have a reference to jQuery here. One thing I'll note, by the way, is that you can reference JavaScript libraries either as local files, like I have a local copy of p5 dom.js here in my folder, but you can also reference libraries through something called a CDN or content delivery network, meaning if it's a really popular library, somebody might have just hosted it somewhere, instead of having to download it, I could just reference the URL. And you know, there's good reasons for doing one or the other, and I'm kind of mixing and matching here, but I just want to get stuff working. So now I should have the tracery library and the jQuery library, and I'm ready to start making stuff happen with tracery. Okay, so let me at least just go here back to my uh, example, and where, wherever that is, I lost it. Here it is. I'm going to hit refresh, um, and I'm going to go back to my code. And what I want to do is start writing the grammar. So I'm going to make a variable called, and let's make it a story. And what I need is to have, now tracery by default looks for something called start. So I'm going to, you don't have to name it start, but I'm going to call it start. And I'm going to say start is and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need the chat, by the way, to start giving me ideas for story things, but I, I guess I'll just be making this up as I go right now. Um, it was a dark and stormy night. So now, if I have this JavaScript object, which essentially holds the grammar, 
I should be able to make a variable called grammar. Oops, uh, misspelled grammar, AR. Okay, so I'm gonna have a variable called grammar and I'm gonna say grammar equals, uh, equals tracery dot, I think create grammar uh, story. Boy, I don't actually remember if that's correct. So one of the things when you're working with the JavaScript library is you've gotta look at documentation. So I'm gonna just go back to the um, uh, GitHub page for tracery and just to like kind of remind myself, uh, yes, tracery.createGrammar spellbook. By the way, if you're looking for an idea, certain things like a cooking recipe or a spellbook, there's a wonderful Twitter bot called Art Assignment Bot. I don't know that it uses a grammar, but these kinds of um, highly structured um, types of narrative scenarios can work really well to have a grammar generate um, different possibilities. I'll also show you at some point that you can use a grammar to generate um, you know, haiku patterns or certain patterns of certain syllables. It's another way to use a grammar. Grammar. Okay, so uh, tracery.createGrammar story, perfect. So now I wanna look at the result and I'll say, uh, I'll say var result equals grammar.flatten. So again, why the word flatten? So there's two words that involve generating text from a grammar. One is expansion and the other is flatten. So this is the idea of an, where am I here? This is the idea of an expansion, right? I'm expanding out from the sort of start and iteratively applying these replacement rules. Now, tracery behind the scenes or any grammar system is probably keeping track of the entire tree that's being generated. But all I want is the end result. So I want to flatten it and get the end result. And that's what's happening over here. So I can say uh, console.log result. And if I run this, uh, come back to my example. Uh, that didn't work. Now, I thought it would automatically use start. Maybe it doesn't. So I'm going to um, add this in there. And I'll oh yeah, okay. The point is, what I want is to give that axiom, that seed phrase start in, um, I want to pass that to the grammar, and the grammar, the, the grammar object, the tracery grammar object, is then going to expand it out based on all those production rules. Now, right now, and you'll notice that the syntax for tracery specifically is a non-terminal uh, element is wrapped in the pound or hash symbol. So this means please replace me as opposed to the word start. Um, and so if I did something like this, we would have a real problem because this would kind of generate to infinity. I almost want to run it to see what happens. I do, let's just do it. What's the worst thing that can happen? Maximum call stack received. So you can see that this idea of replacing, but what I can do is say it was an, and I could say adjective, and then I could add another rule, adjective, um, some possibilities are, uh, it was a dark, shout out your adjectives in the live chat that's going on right now, dark, <laughs> sleepy, somebody wrote, uh, it was a, uh, um, Quiet, so right, if I give all these adjectives now, now I have two non-terminal characters, uh, elements I should say, they're not characters, start, which generates this sentence, um, adjectives, which has three possibilities, and so now if I run this, you can see it was a sleepy and stormy night, it was a sleepy, it was a dark, it was a sleepy, it was a sleepy, it was a quiet, so each time I refresh, I get a new possibility. Okay, so this is level one here of using a tracery grammar. And even this is like plenty to play with. Couple, one thing I should mention is that each one of these has a one out of three chance of being picked. And another reason why you might use a system or you know, modify tracery, you know, think about programming your own sort of grammar generation system uh, from scratch is you might be interested in playing around with those probabilities. What if it's 60, but of course I could do that also right here by just now I've played with the probabilities that dark has a 50% chance of being picked, whereas sleeping quiet only have a 25% chance of being picked. Okay, so let's write a story with a character. And what I'm gonna do actually, I'm gonna do something different, is I'm gonna say, I'm gonna have a story. Um, a, uh, and I'm gonna just use the same kind of story that my uh, children wrote last night, which is a, and I'll call it a hero. A hero fights the monster. Go, hero, go. But what I want is for this hero to be picked. So what I, um, and I'm running out of space here, so let me open this up a little bit. What I want is, what, so, so let me give some options for a hero. 
and I'm going to say uh, dragon, unicorn, uh, rainbow. These are the possible heroes. Okay? So the story is a hero fights the monster. Go, hero, go. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to change this to story. So I want to flatten starting with story, and I'm going to hit refresh. A dragon fights the monster. Go, dragon, go. So that's good. A unicorn fights the monster. Go, unicorn, go. Well, this is kind of working by accident. A rainbow fights the monster. Go, dragon, go. So you'll notice here what I haven't done is secured that I pick the same hero both times. So, you know, in the sort of Mad Libs way of thinking about this, sometimes I want to have a different adjective. So I could say a adjective hero fights the adjective monster. And so in this case, right, refresh, a sleepy unicorn fights the dark monster, go unicorn go. A dark dragon fights the quiet monster, go unicorn go. So I do want a different adjective. I want a random adjective for the hero and the monster. But when I say hero, I want to get the same hero twice. So one of the wonderful things that Tracery has is it has a mechanism for you to assign a uh, production rule, essentially like almost have like a variable that holds something that's picked in the grammar over time across the entire sentence that's story that's being generated. So in that sense, what I can do here is I want to I start with start. And what I want start to, to render, so to speak, to expand, is the story. So start expands the story, which is this. So this should be the same. I'm just getting these little stories here. And now, though, what I want to do is put in here bracket. I'm going to assign hero. And this is the, the hero actually is going to come from this list. So I need to give this list another name. Um, this is, uh, let's just call this characters. Hero, character. So what this does is it says, render the story with a character being picked as the hero. So first it will pick dragon, unicorn, or rainbow, assign that to hero, and then use hero throughout there. So now as I render this, you can see a dark rainbow fights the sleepy monster. Go, rainbow, go. A dark unicorn fights the quiet monster. Go, unicorn, go. So this is basically it. Um, this is how tracery works. Um, you know, I could keep going and it would be sort of like an interesting experiment. Maybe what I'll do actually is we could create on GitHub some type of collaboratively edited grammar. If I publish this example, maybe I'll include a link to the grammar in, um, in this video's description if people want to contribute to it because really the creativity now lies in how far can you go with this? How long can you make this story? What is it? What is the story? How, what types of other things might you assign and pick randomly or assign in advance? But I'll, I just want to show you one other thing. Um, there are um, uh, also, uh, Tracery also includes modifiers. So for example, if I put dot s here, um, I can, dot s will pluralize whatever uh, uh, character is picked. So this isn't going to make a lot of sense, but you can say a sleepy dragons fights the sleepy monster. Go dragon go. But the reason why this is a nice quality is I don't have to include, you know, a, a particular rule that's like plural character or um, I don't have to like include dragon, unicorn, rainbow, dragons, unicorns, rainbow. So there are a bunch of modifiers. Um, I can also use, I believe, dot capitalize. Um, is a modifier that's built into tracery, which will uh, capitalize the particular word. So if I'm picking that hero and putting it at the beginning of the sentence, I can always make sure that the grammar generates in such a way that that word is capitalized. And if you look through the documentation, um, I believe here we'll find also some, um, uh, there'll, probably, there'll be a list of modifiers. <laughs> Um, okay, I also should mention here, by the way, right, one thing you might look at is under here, there are many new examples of Tracer in use, and I also have an exciting new interactive tutorial. So I'd also encourage you to check out this tutorial, tutorial, excuse me, which allows you to sort of type the grammars into these boxes and hit re-roll and see what kind of possibilities you can get. And the features are uh, kind of explained through the various, um, various possibilities here. Um, okay, so ooh, there's so much more here that I want to look into that I haven't. So maybe someday I'll come back and uh, show you some other additional advanced, so to speak, features of the Tracery Library. So this example will be published for you. I encourage you to write your own grammar. Um, of course, you can use emojis as possibilities, as you can see. Um, and we can go back now, by the way. I might as well go back just to return to the beginning of this video and show you now the code which um, we can see here that this, now we can understand how this works, that 
the story starts with a hero picked from a character, a villain picked from a list of monsters, and then the story is once upon a time there was hero.a, which means a hero. It's always going to modify it with a, and that hero was very adjective, and the hero liked food, and the hero was very adjective, and then the hero met an adjective, adjective villain, and she killed the villain, exclamation, and the hero ate the food, and she was so adjective that she adjective that she was adjective to today. And if I go back to uh, this, we can generate one more story. Thank you. Uh, once upon a time, there was a bear, and that bear was very funny, and the bear liked ice cream, and the bear was very pretty. Then the bear met a happy, lovely dinosaur, and she killed the dinosaur, monkey face. And then the bear ate the acorn? Walnut? I don't know what kind of nut that is. And she was so smart, and she was green heart jealous to today. Okay, so thanks for watching this uh, video on um, Tracery. Um, if you make something with Tracery, please uh, thank uh, Galaxy Kate on Twitter, I would say, or contribute to the Tracery project or support it in some way. Um, and, and, I, and I look forward to um, hearing what you think and what you make. And in the next video, I'm gonna look at uh, the Rita library with uh, context-free grammars. Oh, oh, before I leave, you can also use Tracery as a node package. So maybe someday I'll return to that, but you can npm install Tracery, um, and there's documentation for that on the Tracery GitHub as well. Okay, thanks, and see you in another video sometime.